I guess let's get to the topic that like you keep, we keep alluding to because oh, it's such yes. a huge part of your life. So yes. let's talk about cannabis. No, I mean, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, the accident. Yes. Oh, that was a. I, I mean, an accident is always a terrifying and unexpected experience. Mm. That's why, obviously, it is called an accident. But it's you never realize that you're able to, you're going to be able to handle something like that until you're put in that situation. Mm. I never lost consciousness through the entire thing, waiting there on the side of the road for the ambulance to show up. They pulled me out of the car. Everyone's asking my name, where I am. I'm relaying information just perfectly fine, but the pain is just increasing and increasing. So you guys... Was it raining out? Or? We just hit like a slippery patch of ice. Oh, right, because it was snow. Yeah, yeah. We, that was in D.C. And uh, my side of the vehicle just went straight into a rock and a tree. And because I'm so short, uh-huh. I didn't catch the airbags. So oh. the seatbelt technically ripped me in half. <laughs> and so it broke two of my vertebrae, uh-huh. and then it ripped my intestines away from my stomach, punctured my duodenum, and my pancreas. Holy shit. I don't even know what a duodenum is, but it sounds terrible. A duodenum, which I didn't know this thing existed (laughs) either, the duodenum is this tiny little organ that is almost, if you lose it, you'll die, essentially. And it connects your pancreas to your stomach to your intestines. Okay. And it is like the center point for everything that connects everything. And it's so tiny and it's so little that you can't mess with it. Mm -hmm. So because the damage was so severe, Mm -hmm. we had to go in and we had to sew up each organ away from each other. And we had to place tubes in by drilling them into my sides and they would feed into the organ, and then the organ's function would essentially function outside my body due to a machine that was standing next to Sorry, me. Sorry, my face keeps going. <laughs> I just I keep know, going like this, like, what the fuck? I know. Like, honestly, wow. like, sitting there watching your internal organs literally feeding out into different machines and knowing that they're running your body for you Jesus. is, like, one of the most surreal and, like, horrifying things I could ever experience. Yeah. And I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy, but it gives you the greatest respect and perspective in life. I bet. Because they came in one day, and I, I will never forget this day, and my whole team of doctors came in, and they never come in together because doctors are all so busy. Right. And their faces were just staring straight at the floor, and one of them just was like, you know what? We've done six surgeries now. We've tried everything we can. We can't do anything else for you. You should start preparing yourself for the worst. And that was... The worst, like what? Like like death. Jesus. Like, you are going to die here, essentially. And so, like, I had to accept at that moment that, okay, well, I'm going to die thousands of miles from home in this hospital. And this is going to be how I go. And then there was a moment inside of me where I just felt so defeated... And I just remember looking at my hands and thinking, this this can't be it. This can't be the way life goes. Mm -hmm. I have to keep going. I have to dance. I have to sing. I have to run. I have to jump. I have to fuck. Like, I can't. And so I just kind of started making jokes day by day. The doctors would come in, see how I was doing. I'd got... I had them bring a 65-inch plasma screen to my uh, hospital room. So I was, like, just sitting there watching TV, playing Candy Crush all day, Mm -hmm. just waiting for news, waiting to hear, am I getting any better? Weeks passed. Nothing. And during this entire time, I was not allowed to eat or drink anything because of all my organs being separated. Right. So So your organs are still separated. They were separated, and finally, after nine months, we got, like— what I thought was worst news in the world. One of the bags and one of the tubes stopped draining all of the substance that would flow in and out of the right. organ. And to our surprise, the organs had started to heal themselves back together, which had about an 8% chance of doing so. Uh-huh. And I was at the top hospital in the U.S., 
and they'd seen five cases like mine in 25 years, and only Jesus. one had ever survived. Holy shit. So I'm very lucky. Wow. So now you're like one <coughs> of two. One of two. Wow. That's crazy. It was, so how long did it take you to recover completely? I'm still not 100%. Okay. I'm still going through physical therapy. I have to get uh, cortisone and steroid injections in my spine, in my scar tissue. Uh, I mean, it's a process. It's been three years already. Wow. And it's been 11 major surgeries and 27 procedures. Jesus. And it's racked up, I mean close to a million dollars in medical bills. Wow. So it's definitely no joke. Yeah. But it it definitely changed me. I, I definitely see things better in myself mm-hmm. that maybe wouldn't have been there before. Like, okay, like what? I just find that I appreciate everyone and everything so much more. The mm-hmm. love, the laughter, even like the painful moments in life are mm-hmm. just... They have a, like this bitter sweetness that I cherish because yeah. Cause you're alive. Because I'm alive. Yeah, and I'm walking around, and that's that in itself. Like was one of the biggest things too. They were like, "Well, we don't expect you to walk, let alone survive." So wow, so, that yeah. is amazing. And what was, a crazy inspirational story, <coughs> isn't it? Nuts too. How we have to like go through such an incredibly severe experience to gain that kind of insight and appreciation because we forget i think i mean i know for me definitely like i often feel invincible and you know i I don't realize how precious life is and how lucky we all are to have like all our fragile we are yeah i mean we really are like human life is fragile and it can um it can go so fast so fast and you just don't you don't ever think about like today could be my last day no and and i would imagine that that definitely occurs to you more it does and i I think about that day often and it it just reminds me to be grateful for everything like when you're sitting there at the airport and your plane's delayed and you're Mm -hmm. just like oh fuck yeah and then it's like well there could be so much worse than sitting in an airport where there's plugins everywhere i have a device that can take me to any source of entertainment essentially Mm -hmm. so I've been trying to like practice like having perspective in life and being grateful for things. Mm. So I'll I'll have thoughts like like for example what you said like sitting in an airport and like your plane's delayed and like oh my god this is such a pain in the ass. I'm mm-hmm. like okay, let's look at like this another way. How lucky am I to be able to afford to get on a plane and travel somewhere? Right. How lucky am I to be in an air conditioned building with technological devices right. that can keep me distracted and air conditioning and food yep. and I and mean shoes on my feet just shoes everything on my feet. and to be flying home to a place where I have somebody who loves me I have a bed that I can sleep you know what I mean like yep. we, we we focus so much on like these little day-to-day convenience inconveniences and we just blow them up to be like such a fucking big deal and it's like it clouds it, is it not a big deal it does like you're so lucky to have these problems right I mean first world problems you know it is mean? we always catch ourselves yeah. complaining and I still like to complain oh, honestly I love to complain it's like my favorite thing it's, I can't Bi- I love it. like a good bitch fest it's it's great a, I, I just have to sometimes you ha- you gotta yeah. let it out you can't be like fucking like the Dalai Lama no, all day no yeah. no even the Dalai Lama probably gave himself one time where yeah. he's just like oh well, fuck these people <laughs> he's like god damn it fuck idiot <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was it was just really f- uh, interesting because in the beginning of the accident, I had no idea how bad I was hurt. I mm. honestly thought I had just cracked a rib. Wow. And it was, like, two weeks before AVN. Uh-huh. So I was thinking, like, great, I'm going to be, like, limping down the red carpet with, like, a cast on. Yeah. And mm. I did not think that I would be trapped in a hospital for months on end. Jesus. But I remember getting to the emergency room and then being like, oh, no, she has metal in her hair. And it's because I have my clip in extensions at the mm-hmm. time. And I was kind of unconscious at that moment. Mm-hmm. But I could hear them talking around me. And they're like, okay, well, I think we're going to have to shave her head before we wheel her in for an MRI and everything. And I will instantly, my eyes sprang open. Yeah, like, bitch, you're not going to touch my weave. And I'm like, hell no. <laughs> and I'm like, nope, 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 don't touch my hair. And in the neck brace, strapped down to the bed, I wiggle my arms up, 
clip out my extensions and then hand them to the nurse. Oh, my God. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then I just pass out. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And then, like, three or four days later, I wake up, and apparently I'm, like, trying to karate chop doctors because <laughs> I don't know where I am because yeah. of, obviously, the trauma and the drugs they had me on. I thought I was in, like, some foreign place and I was being held captive oh so they God. had to like at one point they're like apparently this is v- very common for people right. to do this but uh, it took six nurses to restrain me and then I had to have a guard at my door because I would bite my restraints off Wow! because I was so convinced in my traumatized state yeah. that I was somewhere that I, I was being hurt yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was. I was in pain, but my yeah. mind could not comprehend it. Right. It was fascinating, though. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, my sister's a nurse, and she has all kinds of insane stories of being, like, attacked by patients. My brother, and, like, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not uncommon at all. No. <sighs> that's nuts. Apparently, I kicked a doctor in the face, too. <laughs> and, but apparently, he was, like, the worst and meanest doctor on the floor, so all the nurses loved me after <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. They were like, you kicked the one person you should have. Wow, that's amazing. God, I'm so glad you're okay. I remember hearing about that, and I was just, I remember here. I remember you telling me that, like, you'd, like, broken your back, and I was like, there is no way that that girl, like, can't not walk again. Like, I can't believe it. Right. And then I remember we touched base again at some point, and you said something along the lines of, like, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to recover 100% because that's what I believe, yeah. like, is going to happen. But, like, you, I think the diagnosis was still, like, it unsure. Was, it was completely but unsure. But you were just, like, I'm determined to, like, make a full recovery. Yeah. And I was, like, that's amazing. And that's where it comes down to is it comes down to the mindset mm-hmm. is of the person. Do you have the will, the want to live? Yeah. Because giving up is easy. Yes, Working to stay alive is yes. hard. You want to hear a crazy story, actually. My mom, um, so my mom had my sister, my sister's the youngest in our family, and she had a cesarean section, and um, the doctor gave her too much anesthetic, mm-hmm. and her heart actually stopped. And so they had to come in, and they had to, like, try to resuscitate her. And my mom is <laughs> not, like, a hippy-dippy yeah. spiritual person. Like, she doesn't really believe in God, the afterlife, any of that stuff, right? Mm. But she says that she distinctly remembers having a choice to stay alive or to let go. And she said she could hear like my dad's voice and she could hear the doctors and the nurses. And she felt incredibly peaceful. Like she was kind of floating Mm -hmm. and she was like, this feels like kind of nice. I kind of just want to like let go and like just fade away. And this just, you know what I mean? Like she just felt this overwhelming sense of peace. Mm -hmm. But then she heard my dad's voice and then she remembered that she had children and she had like a commitment to her life. Yeah. And it like, Pulled her and she did so that she definitely felt like I could like she had a choice and she chose to fight and then she came back. But yes. how crazy is that? You know, like it is though. It's 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 those loved ones that you have around you that mm-hmm. that rally your spirit and mm-hmm. like your sense of self to bring you back. Because I called because I didn't know who to call. I called mm-hmm. my two best friends, my girlfriend mm-hmm. at the time, and then our other friend. Mm-hmm. And I flew both of them out to D.C. and they took care of me. And it was crazy the difference that their presence made. I was, like, completely unaware in my memory that that they were there. But the moment that they would leave, the nurses would be like, okay, we put enough drugs in her to keep a 300-pound man down Mm -hmm. for eight hours. Mm -hmm. Half an hour later, they'd be calling my friends, can you please come back? Because she is, like, going nuts right now. Wow. And the moment they would leave the room, it's like I could feel them away from me. Yeah. But the, them just being there, like, just comforted me so much. It was That's incredible. weird. Wow. But I, I could feel them there, even yeah. though I couldn't see them. Right, right, right. That's just, amazing. I'm so grateful to them, my Danny and my Lauren. Aww. Love you guys. Aww. Um. So, so you came back, which honestly, like, I didn't. I, I was so surprised. I was so surprised, and obviously, so happy to hear that you were that you were coming back and you were going to start performing again. Um, and so you re-signed with, with MindGeek. Yes. And so you've been shooting for browsers? Browsers mostly. We did one babe scene. Mm-hmm. And then we, I think we have a twisties thing coming up this week. And then another scene with browsers this week. So, okay. uh, yeah, it was, it was scary coming back. Because I have, like, little scars, obviously, mm-hmm. that I haven't gotten through my all of my therapy. I haven't mm-hmm. started laser therapy on them. So people will notice that there are marks mm-hmm. on my body. But, I mean, it's 
it's a part of who I am. I want to come back and I want to prove to myself that I can do it. Mm-hmm. This is this is who I am and I love going out there and I love just being me and porn is a part of me. Mm-hmm. And it was never I never needed anything to escape it. It was always my escape. So right. I wanted to come back because it was so fun. How are you like physically handling the scenes? Are there any like positions that you can't do because of your back or are you pretty much like able to kind of I'm able to really actually perform at a almost optimal capacity. It's not really until like my endorphins kind of like slow mm, you're like maybe more sore afterwards yeah mm-hmm. and then i'm like ooh, didn't feel that while that was happening <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah it's it's definitely they've been so gracious as to take it very easy with me and mm-hmm. give me everyone that i asked to work with and mm-hmm. really not asking that much of me and even if they ask something they're like are you okay with this do you yeah. want to test it out so yeah Everyone's being so kind. Oh, that's great. So. Well, you deserve it. Aww. You're a motherfucking princess. No, you're a motherfucking princess. <laughs> no, you, you, no, you, you are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.